Welcome to the seventh video of our Apache BIM series. In this video, we will learn how to pass runtime parameter into our Apache BIM pipeline. So as usual, we'll open GitHub desktop and switch to our new branch, which is feature slash 1.3 text IO parameterized. And just to make sure the code is up to date, we will click on the fetch origin to make sure all the code is up to date. Okay, now it's here. So now we will have a quick look on the changes for this branch. So for, for that, we will click the preview pull request button. And this will open this UI where we can compare between two branches. So we will select 1.2 branch and this will show all the changes that is being made so far. So we did some change in the readme file. We added the runtime parameter part on the on the data flow run command. In the palm file, we updated the version number. We added two, two new dependency that we will go through. And there is a text IO options. So we added a new new parameter on the text IO option. Earlier it was blank. And in the text IO pipeline we did some change the changes are basically earlier we used to hard code all those file path so now you can see this file paths are coming from a config that we will go through and this config is being loaded from this options and then we added some new classes which is a model here so we have the config sync source and then there are like we added new two utils. This utils will help us to load some of this configuration that we will go through also. And also we have a sample config JSON that we're gonna use to actually run our application. So let's have a look on the source code. So for having a look on the source code, we will open our ID, which is Eclipse and we make sure our code is up to date we do the refresh and also do a maven update project force update this will make sure our project is properly built you can see on the right side is being built so now let's have a look on the code So our main class is text IO pipeline. So what is our goal? So our goal is actually earlier we used to hard coded those three file path into the code, right? So now what we want to do, we want to make those things parameterized. So instead of hard coding those file path, so we want to actually get those file path from a config or like a, from a parameter. So the way we're gonna do it is like uh, we're gonna get those uh, parameter from text IO options. So if I open the text IO options, you can see I have a variable defined which is called get config path. Now the question is that we could have done it in another way, which is actually we can actually have three variables here, like we need uh, one for input and two for output. So we can just define three three defined variable. And, and pass it as a three defined string parameter. But what I want to do, I want to make it a little bit complex so that you can get some more example. So I'm gonna read a file actually, and inside the file, I will define the whole config as a JSON object. And that I will read, and then it will be loaded in a Java Pojo. So I have a sample JSON file here which I have stored under the source main resource folder. So let's have a look on that. So if I open the JSON file, which is a sample one, this is actually <coughs> in a, it has a JSON file and it has two block. One is called source and another one is called sync. So under the source, I have input file path where I have defined the uh, path what we earlier hard coded. So it's defined over here. And for the sync, I have these two path 
successful output file path and failed output file path and this is also defined over here And what we're going to do, we're going to store this file, this JSON file, into a Google storage bucket. And then we will define the storage bucket's path as a part of our parameter. And we will actually make our application read the, this, this JSON object from that file. And that convert this whole thing into a POJO. So that we can actually read those information from the POJO and use it while we are configuring the whole application so let's see how we have done it so let's go back to our text io pipeline and as you, as you can see in the first part we are reading the pipeline options and as we have seen in the pipeline options we have added one new variable which is the config path so this is the part where we will actually pass the config Paths variable, path variable, which is the path of, of our GC, uh, GCS bucket. And then this is the same code where we create the pipeline. And here you can see we are loading a config object. So let's have a look on the config object at first. So config object is a simple, simple Java POJO. So if you open that, it actually has two other objects as an attribute. It's a source and a sync uh, and inside the source so if we go to the source object we have one variable which is called input file path if we go back and if you go to the sync you will see we have two new variable which is going to contain those file uh, information so now there's an interesting thing is that none of this uh, classes has a setter getter but it, it actually has so i'm actually using a library which is called project lombok that i have shown earlier in the pom file we have added a new dependency which is this one lombok and this dependency is actually helping us to auto generate those getter and setter method so if i go back to the code so I have added these three new annotation, so which which is actually helping me to create some constructor and data setter. I won't go in detail. If you are interested, you can go and uh, check out the Project Lombok website. It has actually more detail. But this will actually automatically uh, create like setter, data, and constructor for these classes. Cool so this will hold the whole, whole config object basically what's going to happen this this uh, that pojo will be loaded by this information so now let's have a look how this thing is being loaded so let's go back to our pipeline and we have a config util that we have written and it is a load config and we are passing the options dot get config path so we are just passing a config path which is a gcs gcs bucket uh, gcs files file path so if we go to the load config so we can see this is the path that we are passing and here we are actually splitting the path by the colon so the way we're gonna pass the path is actually we're gonna send three part of the path so the first part is uh, is the project ID of the Google uh, Cloud Platform, and the second part is gonna be the bucket name, and the third part is gonna be the path of that file itself, including the folder or whatever is is there. And then after we actually split it into an array, so this has a config path array which has these three part first one project ID, second one bucket, third one path. Then we are gonna pass this thing into this storage util, utility class that, that is what we also built. And this has a method called read file as a string from GCS. And we are passing the project ID, bucket and the file path. And we are loading this thing in a temporary file over on this path. So let's have a look on this 
method again so here we have we have some log we have this three variable project id bucket file path and the temp path that we're passing and here we are using a utility from google cloud storage so this is the another dependency that we're using so if we go back to the pom file again so above this one you can see we added a new dependency for the google cloud storage so this dependency will help us to read from the storage bucket so that's what we're using so this is actually this is a method what what actually at first it set up the environment with the project and uh, id and some credentials and then we actually read a blob from that specific path which is defined over here in the bucket and this is the blob actually which is the, that file right and then from the blob dot get content it gives us the entire content the string and then we convert it to a string and returning it as a string so this is how we are reading that file and sending back the file content as a string so back to our previous file which is the config util so config util is getting a string here and then we are using the object mapper of of jackson so i believe you have used it in different project and this string is being mapped by the config class what we have did what we created earlier and that is being mapped and stored it as a config object and then we are sending back that config object so this is how we are loading the config object so now get back let's get back to our text io pipeline which is this one and we have loaded the config object and then that's the part is very simple so earlier we used to pass the the hard coded string so now we are reading those information from the config object because we have loaded it here so config dot get source dot get input path this is where the input path is there and also here we used to pass the hard coded string now here we are reading it from the config path uh, sorry for the config object and again this is the third one so this is how we are making the whole thing parameterized and now uh, we will run the application and see that this thing is working so as usual we'll build our application and run it and to do that we will actually open our console and the way would, that we will do is we will open this path in the file explorer and then type cmd it will open a common prompt with that same path and then here we will do the build first which is maven clean install this will build the application so our build is done and it has done building successfully so the next part is going to be we will do the authentication so for that g cloud auth login So we got our link here what we're gonna copy and open it in our browser and we will sign in with our account and then click on allow and our console is now authenticated so now we will build our template so we have our template building command which is this one if we have a look on that it's using flex template build and we have the path for the template we have our image this is where the image will be created the language is java it's java 11 and this is our path for the local, local, local jar file where it got created by using our maven clean install command and this is the environment this is our main class so that's same as before there is no change we will see there is some change in the run command 
Awesome. So the template build is done. So now to verify that, we will go to the cloud console, open our artifact registry, open our repository, this one, and see this latest tag, this image just got created. So that means we're good. So now we will actually run the template. So as I mentioned earlier, we got some change in the run command. So you can see the first part is same. We are running a flex template run and we're naming it data pipeline and the template is defined. What is defined in the previous part, same part. And this is the extra part, which is this dash dash parameter. And dash dash parameter, we are, we are actually uh, we're telling there is a parameter and the name is config path right that's the name in in our in, in our parameter and the config path has this whole new string and this string is divided by this colon and the first part is the name is the project id second part is the bucket name and the third part is the path of that file where we're located so before running this command you have to make sure you have uploaded this file into this path so for that you have to go to the cloud storage bucket so i have already uploaded this file i'll show you the location so crosscut data bucket this is my bucket and then i created a folder called config here and inside the config i uploaded this file in config 1.3.0 so you can just drag and drag and drop it over here it will automatically create it or you can just use those options this upload file upload folder whatever it's pretty easy and if you click on that and then click again on this file you will see the whole content so this is what i have uploaded this file so nice so now let's get back to the part and then hit enter now it will run this command so it has already done it so now let's go back to our console open the data flow jobs and you can see there's one pipeline has been queued if we go inside there so it's spinning up when it will spin up we can we will see the DAG over here So the pipeline ran successfully and you can see the DAG is showing over here and all of the boxes are green. So it's the same pipeline, same code, it, but it just parameterized. So the output should be same as well, like the previous one. So if you click on the box, you can see the 20 day code has been loaded and the transform session also has 20 and out of that 70 will be a, a successful record is going to be here and then rest three would be unknown square feet data is a three so exact same thing it is good and if we go to our storage bucket and it's into the storage bucket in the uh, under the data flow folder we should see this files it does got created this two file is either result and one more it has got created so these are the new two file which contains that result now let's open one to make sure it is good so yeah the data is here and that is the end of this lecture if you want to know more about the apache beam i have some other lectures you may want to go through those lectures to get some more idea about how to use apache beam with java and dataflow and you will get some more in-depth knowledge that's it for now See you in the next lecture. Thank you.